Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, everybody. Oh, sorry. Hey. 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 <laughs> you go. To, uh, to episode 15? What? Or 16? There's no way to know. Yeah, I'll check later. But regardless, it's either 15 <laughs> or 16. And Alex and Jim analyze Billy Joel lyrics. That part I know is true. I love that um, the very first thing you prepare when you're preparing, you didn't have. Right, the number. <laughs> and I'm saying that as I Google the lyrics for the song we're going to talk about. <laughs> I, listen, uh, I listen to that song a lot. And uh, oh, so, the, so the song that Alex chose is called Close to the Borderline. And, um, and if you look at, up songs that are about a borderline or near a borderline, there's so many songs that are near or around or about a borderline. True. And this is one of them. But I was surprised, pleasantly surprised. It was the first song. Because sometimes you'll, you'll say the name of a song and a song by like Bruno Mars will come up. That happened with a Billy Joel song. I can't remember which one. Oh, um, I think it's Just the Way You Are, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it kind of bugged me that his was first. I was like, listen, we know what order these came out in. One of them was a long time ago. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Too um, chronological. Yeah, the Bruno Mars song, I have to say, is not as good as the Billy Joel song. They're both fine no, songs. It's a fine song. He's got the better voice. Yep, he does. But that and doesn't mean you get to go first. Nope. No, come on. It's Billy Joel. We talked about this. The prototypical <laughs> Billy Joel song. We mentioned this, Bruno Mars. I know you listen to our show. <laughs> he does. But uh, I, this, I'm going to go ahead and believe it. Yeah, of course. He's got to be the guy who's been writing under different pseudonyms and asking. That's for probably it. And requesting songs that he thinks will make him look better. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. As long as they don't. As long as they never talk about just the way you are. Tell you what, Billy Joel would never do a whole concert in shorts. Now that's for damn sure, and um, never should he ever be in shorts. No. Even just walking around, don't do that. <laughs> no, never, please. I don't even think you should do that in your own place. Yeah, no, he should probably have like a robe. Yeah. And boots. And Motorcycle he, boots. And he wears pants under the robe. Come Please, because you know he doesn't tie it properly. No, nobody at that age does. Nobody that old knows how to tie a rope. <laughs> totally true. I think that's one of the it's first true. thing. One of the first skills you lose as you get older is the rope. Yeah, I think when you get to that age, they should move your mailbox closer to your house, <laughs> so you don't go out there <laughs> endangering the neighborhood. Or you have a guy who's just, that's that guy's job, and he he wears a robe, but that's his work attire. He's you getting mail. Yeah, there you go. Have a he, like a double, like a Saddam Hussein body double. But he's in really good shape, so when people see you and they see me as a seventy-year-old, oh, Mr. Bruce, getting his mail. Oh, he looks good. He's doing great. Meanwhile, you're uh, up in the attic in a hospital bed, <laughs> um, eating and drinking through your veins. <laughs> <laughs> that you know that description uh optimistic <laughs> it's really it's the dream right <laughs> uh, for real by the way i've been in a hospital a couple times and i uh, i did think man if i wasn't here for something really i don't mind being here i thought right? i have have an ongoing fantasy that like something very non-deadly happens where they're like you have to be in the hospital for a month yeah there's the remote yeah you know uh, what it is too for a month this would be the magic thing you're infectious yeah asymptomatic right it doesn't affect me but if you come near me that's it for you yeah so the nurse can't spend too much time on, on chit chat right you got to so get, get out. Get in, get out. No one's making their little jokes because we're not exchanging air. Nope. I don't want to do that. Nope. Don't. Can't make me go to work. Nothing. Mom Let me call. rock. 
yeah. for a month. Mom, mom calls, can I visit you? No. No. No, I value uh, your life too much. Yeah. I can't do it. I'm considerate. Stay away, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of uh, it's kind of what happened over Christmas. <laughs> like I would love to come home for Christmas, Mom, but you're uh, high risk. Yep. Sure, if I get it, I'll probably be fine. But you, you're too valuable. <laughs> Your community. Um, yeah. I do uh, joke every year around Thanksgiving because somebody I don't know will always go. Are you going to go see your folks? For Thanksgiving, and I say the same thing every time, even if I know it might make them uncomfortable. I go, folks did me a solid a long time ago and died. <laughs> it's uh it's clean. It always gets a pretty decent laugh from the right person. And that person, I'm like, oh, they get it. Okay, cool. And the ones who don't, eh, you wouldn't have liked me anyway. Oh, uh, you're a ghoul. And you're like, no, I did all my processing and I'm done now. Yeah. You're just finding out about my parents, so you're upset. Yeah, this is new. <laughs> yeah, I've been done with this. I went through it. In fact, it happened a while ago. Why didn't you uh, call and check on them? Yeah, I can't believe you're just getting started. <laughs> All right, close to the borderline. Uh, <laughs> I, oh, yeah. Um, close to the borderline, close to starting to talk about the song. Uh, <laughs> first impression, this is my first impression of the song is, what a clean, stripped down, rock and roll, borderline punk song it is. Yeah, I feel like that's what he wanted. Um, like, I'm edgy now. I think it was at this point in his career where everyone um, was like, I, we don't know how to sell your stuff or package you. You're doing a lot of jazz and blues and someone said you have to make a rock and roll album yeah and so of course because he is him he's like oh well, then i'll write a song called still rock and roll yeah <laughs> I went, okay but also some other stuff um I, and this, I think this is the best song on that album you know what it's a damn good song it's stripped down the right way yep i don't think it has a little sort of a punk quality to it, but it didn't feel like, oh, I'm going to try to be punk. I think it was just, he just did it. Yeah. And there's the, yeah. the some nice vocal choices I think are made. Just the whole thing, I'm like, this is eminently listenable. Um, not a piano or keyboard to be found anywhere in this song. No, not not in the lead anyway. Yeah, I don't think there's one piano at all in the song, which is weird for a Billy Joel song, but not bad. Not bad. He, he uh, you know, that's obviously his best thing, but I think a lot of songs on, are on that album, same thing. Yeah. They were like, let's de-emphasize the piano man shit because we can't sell that. Right. You be a rock guy. Yeah, and uh, it starts out with, it heavily featured drums. Is there another Billy Joel song that's like that? Because there's a lot of drums in this. Drums, I think, drive this song, which is usually not the case with a Billy Joel song. Usually not the case. Um, kind of incompatible, I guess, with piano stuff. But um, I'm thinking of, was it Good Night Saigon that had a lot of drum work? Yeah. There are some for sure. Um, and, you know, some of his stuff, I guess, falls under the rock and roll umbrella before this album, but not much. Yeah, no. Not to this degree. This The, their, the drum work on it is almost, um, it would be at home in a Foo, Foo Fighters B-side. It was so much drum. There's a lot of drum going on. It's, <laughs> there's so much drumming going on. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah, it, no, it is a, a rock song. Yeah. And it is, you know, still quite peppy. Yeah. It's, uh, I, you know, I don't think it's uh, edgy and dangerous musically. It's very like, it's a pop song, pop rock. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you were talking about it being about New York. And uh, I do like that it is about New York, but it is uniquely about cesspool. New York. It's not 
Yes. Those little town blues, it's not the batteries up and the it's not that. <laughs> the other things down. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the batteries down. Um, People ride in a hole in the ground. Okay. Got it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, it's definitely about the famous shitty times in the 70s when the city was bankrupt and uh, the, the federal government wouldn't give them any money. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and all the things, he kind of lays out all the things that were happening. Uh, we didn't start the fire style. Yeah. Um, during the shitty times in New York. It's the times in New York that every, all the older people who live here uh, claim was the best time. Yeah. It was great here when it was shitty here. Yeah. <laughs> now it's clean and safe. I had this friend. Oh, good. My friend Bobby, well, he was stabbed, but still, he was a goat. Yeah. Yeah. If he were here today, <laughs> he'd tell you how great it was. Yeah. All, all the way until the last moment. But he was fell down the elevator shaft at Andy Warhol's apartment building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And... It's definitely uh, that weird romance that these people have. Um, yeah. I think they liked it because it was. You know, nobody, nobody else liked it. Yeah. <laughs> now everybody wants to come to New York for something or other. So uh, I'll just read the first line to, <laughs> because I think it's great that we get right into just, this is what it is. Blackout heat wave 44 caliber homicide. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> That's all you need to know. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it was that son, son of Sam who used the 44. Yeah, it must be. It was that the summer of Sam. Yeah. When they had the, the heat wave and the blackouts and, uh, the psycho. Do you think um, the yeah, beginning of the summer of Sam before everybody knew exactly why it was the summer of Sam, maybe there was a guy named Sam. Who heard it was the summer of Sam and was like, "Oh, is this for me?" And then realized, yeah. and then he, he like went back to college, and lost thirty pounds. Yeah, he's like, "It's the summer. Is it the <laughs> summer of Sam?" Hey, wait, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> In their cars? Oh, comedians, by the way, are notorious for in January, particularly like struggling comedians, are notorious for beginning every year by going. They are the group that goes this is my year they say that every year not everybody does oh, yeah. that. like if you have a regular job you don't always say that and man i think all those of us who said that in 2020 were hilarious <laughs> who was right yeah. epidemiologists <laughs> like, this is going to be my year i'd be great if early earlier in like january 5th Fauci happened to tweet that. <laughs> Old Tony Fauci is really going to get it done this year. <laughs> but he, meant, but he meant something else, like he was going to build a man cave. Right. Oh fuck! I got to go to work constantly. I'm 78. He was finally going to start sculpting. <laughs> I wonder if he lived in shitty 70s New York. He had to. Was he Brooklyn? He sounds no. like it, right? Somebody drop it in the comments. Somebody is Fauci yeah. from Brooklyn. Yeah, Bru you, Bru I'll Venmo you $20. Drop it in the comments, Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that our listener? Yeah, remember Bruno Mars listens to this. Oh, Bruno. Yeah, Bruno. Of course. <laughs> How could I forget? That's right. It was four conversations ago. All right. So we got the first line done. All right, you take it from there. <laughs> ah, the bums drop dead and the dogs go mad in packs on the west side, uh, which is a true thing that went on here. I guess the far west side was kind of a wasteland at the time and there were like roaming packs of dogs. Wow. Yeah, it was <laughs> an actual issue. Uh, I. Yeah. Now the far west side is like galleries. Yeah. So, so people like Fauci are all upset. Yeah, I think 
I like hey, I like dogs, but not so much in packs. Yeah. And rabid, rabid packs of dogs. Yeah. On the west side. Oh, that was New York, baby. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and on uh, the east side it was all feral cats and once <laughs> once a <of> summer <laughs> nobody crossed sixth avenue <laughs> and then one time i tell you it's a sad story but one time a feral cat fell in love with a rabid dog and it was sad it was sad because they couldn't their parents <laughs> very tragic <laughs> uh, I love it. That's a good movie, right? That's an idea for a movie. Actually, that is a yeah, movie. Yeah. Or a play. Yeah, some kind of play. Some kind of... <laughs> oh, um, shit. Young girl standing on a ledge looks like another suicide. I like the... Dif I, I like this because it fits the song tone so well. It's so dismissive. Yes. It's, looks like it's another suicide. This is just what it is. It it frames so much of the song. The tone of that line alone, I think, tells you how we feel about it. It's number one, we're not going to fix it. No. Number two, well, I, I didn't get attacked by the rabid dog, so they're fine with me because it doesn't affect me personally. And we're all yes. kind of in our dumb head space right here. And uh, he sends it home by sa saying she wants to hit those bricks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. She wants to hit those bricks because the news at six got to stick to a deadline. She's not even doing it for herself. Yeah. <laughs> She's doing it for the news. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a weird, weird misreading of everyone's motivations, maybe. Yeah. Now that may, yeah. <laughs> she might have done it for the I but yeah she probably didn't do it for the probably news. unrelated to the news yeah um, but yeah it is that sort of like yeah the city's dangerous and everyone's losing their minds but what are you uh, gonna do move what are you gonna do I have uh, my good friend Nadia grew up here in the city uh, in you know those days she was like a kid and a teen and she like ran around with the beastie boys <laughs> they were her friends from school oh fantastic uh and she talks all the time about you know and her brother who passed away recently was a graffiti artist um whose stuff is still like visible somewhere <laughs> oh beautiful. um but okay. she talks all the time about how you just dealt with it you just like she told us stories of like her brother would say like, hey, if you're walking home after a certain hour, what you do is you walk in the middle of the street because people can jump out from between cars if you're on the sidewalk, but you just walk down the middle of the street and you'll be fine. Oh, wow. And, and it was just like, oh, okay, that'll work. There was no like, what's become of this city? It was just like, okay, yeah, that's just what you do. Wow. Um, yeah, I feel like she has hundreds of those, and that's the only one that stuck in my brain. It's just all these kids walking in the middle of the street to get home. Because even with the cars, it was probably safer. Yeah, I know. I've heard multiple women tell stories of of New York, but not just New York, but, but some New York ladies who have particular tactics of acting a particular kind of crazy. Oh, sure using that um yeah that's funny it's so walk in the middle of the street wow that's great yeah a great little detail from those days or ride that's, your bike in the middle of the street that's a it, it's an interesting application of problem solving <laughs> yeah interesting i would just do that oh, okay um, I mean, it's when a city this size is dangerous. So it's like, well, what can you do? I mean, you can't, you know, just stay in the safe part. It was like, I think at the time, was, there was no safe part. Yeah. It was a more dangerous part. But you just, uh, you did what you had to do and you, you got there. Yeah. And uh, I lived in Chicago for many years. And uh, one 
there's bad neighborhoods and good neighborhoods and blah, blah, blah. But sometimes the good place you want to get to in between the good, and that's how those cities are. You're like, well, I'm at this place that's fine. And I'm going to this place that's fine in the middle of it. <laughs> yeah. And I don't have any other way to go. I guess rooftops, but <laughs> I bet that was the first solution before walk down the middle of the road. I was like, well, we can oh, yeah. scale the rooftops. Yeah, just Jason Bourne it. Yeah, okay, that's <laughs> got its own problems. Yeah, a lot of buildings are a little too far apart. What are you gonna do, walk in the middle of the street? Who said that, Gary? <laughs> I'm, I got my eye on you, Gary. You're going places. As I've as I've said before, Gary's one of my go-to if there's a joke name I need. I don't for some reason say Gary a lot. It's the best, and you can especially in New York because you can say Gary. Gary, yeah. Oh, Gary. Oh my God. Gary Goldman, when he does impressions of his brother talking to him, will go yeah. <laughs> because uh, the news at six got to stick to a deadline while the millionaires hide in Beekman Place. Where's Beekman Place? Beekman Place is uh, upper east side, all the way on the water. It is like a little enclave. Uh, yeah. Super expensive places to live. I think there used to be like freestanding houses there. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Until they all floated away in balloons. Yeah, it's really kind of funny to see this line in this song now because like the whole island <laughs> is an island for millionaires or people approaching that level yeah so it's very funny to think of millionaires being contained to beekman place yeah um that part of now that part of the of the uh, era probably was better right <laughs> maybe people, the, i mean the reason they yeah. were yeah, the reason they were contained, but I mean, that's the, the balance, right? It's safer, but you can't afford to be here, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, there, you, could, you could live in Manhattan for at a lower price, but you had to walk in the middle of the street. So yeah, you decide. Well, so I want to get the, make sure people get the rhyme here. So it's while the millionaires hide in Beekman Place, the bag ladies throw their bones in my face. Not Literal? Sure, what that means? Soup bones? Are they throwing themselves at him sexually? I don't know, maybe. Or is it just like chicken bones? Yeah, I was like, is it soup bones? But yeah, or is it, uh, hey, for $10, I'll do this thing for you that I, I know fellas like. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible opening line. Uh, I need to write a script. Oh, the fellas like. I should write a script that has a prostitute in it. <laughs> really I know, I know you, uh, you, you, you fellas go for the, uh, for the stuff down, down below, right? You like that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> the south of the equator. You like it, like it when you get a little, uh, get a little touchy. You like it when you get a little touchy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, great! She never says dirty words at all. <laughs> Just but, embarrassed. Uh, I'll do anything. I just don't make me say it. Well, <laughs> don't make. It sounds so gross when you say it. <laughs> Almost makes me embarrassed to do it. Ah, <laughs> uh, here's a very common complaint from the old days. I get attacked by a kid with stereo sound. I don't want to hear it, but he won't turn it down. Yeah, yeah. Got guys with the big well yeah now era another era because they all got their ear pods now they're fine right yeah now everyone's just talking to themselves yeah but in the old days kids you would carry a, a tape recorder yeah. on your shoulder like that yeah yeah and you'd play your music very loud and sometimes you'd roller skate at the same time just <laughs> a solid look. By the way, have you ever been, have you been to a yard sale or a thrift store anytime in say the last 15 years and come across a boom box? Cause I have. 
I have not been to a yard sale because there's no yards. Right, fair. <laughs> there are flea markets every once in a while. Yeah, you'll see like the old or a thrift shop. Uh, and I just remember the arms race in back in those days of like how many tape players there could be or how many speakers. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I got one before I went to college that was like, we're well, going to college, you're going to need this. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember it was a great big deal that there were two tape decks and you could record from one tape to the other tape. Okay, yeah, that's some sweet tape. Tape deck had the counter on it. Yeah. The little, uh, the, the, just the more shit it had on it, the cooler it was. Yeah. Dials and knobs, and I didn't know what half of them did. Dude, uh, they're like 30 pounds. Oh, yeah. They're so stupid. So stupid. Like 8D batteries. Yeah. Or you could plug it in, but nobody's plugging it in. No. Uh, and, and the D batteries, no no joke. You got yourself a solid two weeks of listening pleasure, and then you're <laughs> spending 30 more bucks or whatever on batteries. Yeah, and it's not that the tape would just stop playing when the battery ran out. It just would get slower and slower. Yeah. And then you'd be like, I can, it's still cool. I can still listen to it. Yeah. And if the I'm not buying eight more D batteries, because that's 20 bucks I don't have. Well, and if it stopped, there was a chance you ruined your tape because the tape now was looped around. It wasn't retracted into the tape. It was in the system. Yes. And you had I'm, to get the pencil and do the whole thing. Yeah. I I'm think bad, we can just call this. that again. <laughs> <laughs> this show should just be called we're old <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's more about that than billy joel who also is old yeah now and we talk about this sometimes where billy joel will use a cliche in a song like i get attacked by a kid the a kid with stereo sound and that's been in so many movies the kid with the stereo it was yeah. in a, it was in the, the whale Star Trek movie to let you know this was the 80s with the punk right. rocker. Um, oh, yeah. But I think to his credit, I suspect because of when this is, he was probably actually irritated by it because he was actually here. Yes. And based on who he is, he's like, ah, I got to write a song. Let me look out the window and see. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll use that. Today. Oh, I hate that. Here's another thing I hate. Isn't it funny though to be a rock and roller and to that? He's like, I love rock and roll, but could you turn it down? <laughs> Play some of my old stuff. It's quieter. <laughs> uh, I would love to have seen a guy uh, like a real mean looking guy in the 70s with a boom box cranking just the way you are would just be visually <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Uh, suicide. <laughs> suicide in this city. Um, here's what I think makes the song uh, good and interesting, though, is this. I'm gonna, I'll just read it. Um, Life is tough, but it's just enough to hold back the tears until it's closing time. I survived. I'm still alive, but I'm getting close to the borderline. He um, didn't like that period in New York <laughs> that all these old people romanticize. Yeah. He's like, no, I'm going insane. <laughs> I'm losing my shit because this city is fucked up. Yeah. Um, which is not a take that, uh, you, I mean, may, I bet if you ask him now, he'd be like, oh, those were, the, those were the great days. That's when New York was great. But at the time he's like, this sucks. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was saying. I like about the song is it's a New York song that isn't just isn't this the best thing in the world. It's which he has is, plenty of. Yeah, this is my city. I live here. And luckily, the bar is open until a certain hour so I can quiet the sound in my own head. Yeah, that's fantastic. It's also nice uh, that it's a borderline. Every if you look up borderline songs or border songs, they're always about the actual border, <laughs> and they're usually like uh, a pop song with like Spanish influence. 
Yeah. There's something about crossing the border or south of the border. And this is a metaphorical borderline. Um, I like that. Yeah. We should write a song about crossing the border into Canada and how it's not that hard. Yeah. That, that'd be a good song. They were I, very nice to me. Yeah. They had bottled water. <laughs> I got in in 25 minutes, and I'll be honest, I expected it to take a little less. That's my one complaint. <laughs> <laughs> they apologized, though. And then the roads got better all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> roads got better. Yeah, they That's did. So much better. <laughs> oh, man, our band is going to be great because we've come up with a lot of ideas for our songs. <laughs> It's true. Some is. I hope someone's compiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord, yeah. That this, by the way, a uh, lot of lyrics. This is one of those lots of lyrics, but I feel like they're pretty economical lyrics. They they belong in the song, and they don't feel to me like you're. Of course, complaining is going to happen more than once. Sure, sure. But it feels like there's enough reason, and also just. He kind of kills it. He kind of kills it on the vocals for this song, in my opinion. I think they're just what they need to be. Yeah, I agree. Uh, nothing uh, zany. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely like shouting at us in the in a proper rock and roll fashion. <laughs> oh, and by the way, no bridge or change that I feel like. Why did it, that happen there? Yeah, there definitely is one, but it, it belongs. Yeah. yeah, it fits. It doesn't feel like, I remember we were talking about songs that sound like you could have danced to it up until then. <laughs> right. And then everybody goes, oh. Huh? Oh, it's back. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, the drum thing, and now we're back. <laughs> okay. Uh, a buck 380 <laughs> won't buy you, buy you much lately on the streets these days. And when you can get gas, you know you can't drive fast enough on the parkways. I think that just means there's too damn many people, right? I think so. The traffic is terrible. Yeah. I don't like a buck 380. That seems very like a one of those dad jokes. <laughs> yeah. A buck 380. Which is what, 480? I think so. Yeah. I feel like you'd get something on the street. Yeah, because a buck, but for reals, is he saying it's 480? I don't, right? Because it's don't know. I think it's one of those cutesy dad jokes. <laughs> Before um, he <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, probably more acceptable at the time. I don't know. Yeah. But it's like, all right, bud. <laughs> um, I also like that he's buying stuff on the streets. I guess drugs? You can't get much weed for... 480 <laughs> that's probably true i think that's probably when you, true. and when you can get gas um is this the same time as the gas shortage yeah that sounds about right because this would have been i think uh carter's in the white house right yeah. right around that time and oh. the gas lines everywhere it's so crazy to see documentary footage from those days and how <laughs> those look, look at those lines of cars that got like nine miles to the gallon. And then they would interview the drivers and they're like, this is bullshit. <laughs> they're so mad. Yeah. Like, you are doing nothing to <laughs> help this crisis <laughs> with that yeah. fucking car. Yeah. And to, to their credit, you know, the average human being, including ourselves, most of the time lacks imagination to solve big problems that nobody's at least tried to solve a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure they're- So funny. Um, it's just odd to look at now. Yeah, oh, for sure, when you- oh, Everyone jockeying, like, oh, is a, a Tesla better than a Prius? And how much, you know, how, what's my footprint? Yeah. And you'll just look at like 50 years ago and people are like, fuck this, I have to go places by myself in my giant car. Yeah, back then where they were like, uh, hey, hippie, no, you're not taking lead out of my gas. <laughs> <laughs> the lead is what makes it go. 
<laughs> I know because the, the, the voice in my head that started right after I started driving this lead powered car. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we're cooking along. There's a lot of damn lyrics. Um, you can drive fast anymore on the parkways. Oh, this, uh, he did do a little vocal thing here. Rich man. Yeah. Rich man, poor man, either way, American. Shoved into the lost and found. The no nukes yell, we're going to all go to hell with the next big meltdown. That's uh, very much of its age, too, because people were running their mouth about how we shouldn't even have nuclear plants. And they might have been right. I don't know. But well, this was right around Three Mile Island, wasn't it? Uh, yep. When was that? I'm getting skeptical looks from my nope. my live in ninja. I, I know you're right because SNL did a sketch where um, Dan Aykroyd played played Jimmy Carter and he went in to clean up Three Mile Island himself. <laughs> Great. And he became the giant, uh, the 50-foot Jimmy Carter. And he left Rosalind for the black maid who was also there, played by Garrett Morris. Oh, boy. Why do I remember that? I don't know. I worked there for 10 years and I don't remember that. Was it during that era? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's true. It was not my era, <laughs> but I'm off the hook. Um, that was also a shortly after that, there was a spate of meltdown movies. Yeah. It was very much on everyone's mind that like, oh, and this well before Chernobyl, there was Three Mile Island. There was another one. Is it Love Island? Or am I, was that a reality show? Love anyway. Island is a reality show, yeah. <laughs> was it Temptation Island that, had, that, the that had the meltdown? Yeah. <laughs> I Love think they had several. I feel like they had a bunch. Love Island, by the way, the only one of those kinds of shows that's worth watching, and it's the greatest show. Oh, man. Okay. Here's why. They don't pretend it's about anything else. Oh, that's good. There's yeah. You do hate the pretending. It's just hot people probably hooking up. And the best part is when they vote people out, they don't want to do it. They always go, <laughs> they always go, well, we're, I'm not even going to try to do the accent because they don't try. I don't even think those are real accents. Wait, is it British? It, I want to say it's Australian or it's okay because they because they're it takes a while for you to know what the fuck they're talking about. Okay, yeah, that's Australian. But once you do, after a while, you get it. And when they vote people off, they so they'll say stuff like, "Well, I had to vote somebody off," so you know it seemed like Gary. Uh, <laughs> Seemed like Gary kind of was, you know, kind of wasn't having that much fun lately. So I voted Gary out, but I love you, man. And he'll go, hey, yeah, you had to vote somebody out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> hey, it so sounds like it might be Canadian. <laughs> right? Oh, sorry. Yeah, they're just there to bone. It's hilarious. And they're right because they're all beautiful. Please. None of Please our... Yeah. I... If you do enough boning, I can stop and nobody has to worry about me boning. <laughs> Are you worried about holding up your end? Yeah. So if you guys do it, then I can just be this kind of doughy Irish guy who might come to your town and tell you jokes. Oh, that's your business card. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I am the age that I would still have business cards. <laughs> Anyway, the thing I was trying to get to is uh, everyone should watch uh, China Syndrome. Fantastic film. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going into the next chunk. Do it. I got remote control and a color TV. I don't change channels, so they must change me. I like that. Very nice. Feels like a different song. Yeah. Like, that feels like uh, uh, Talking Heads. Yeah. I think maybe just because so many of their songs are about TV <laughs> in some way. It's a good lyrical turn, though. Yeah, it's very nicely done. I got real close friends that will get me high. They don't know how to talk, and they ain't going to try. I think they can talk. 
I think he means they don't know how to have a conversation. Right. They don't know how to get real, maybe. They don't know how to like talk about yeah. what's really going on. And they ain't gonna try. They they're burnouts. Yeah. This is they're real close friends. Yeah. <laughs> um, I I mean, this all sounds, you know, he's writing in what, 1978 or whatever, 79. Yeah, but, the album comes out in 1980. Yeah. And we all went through this part where we're like I got a remote control on a color TV. My friends are baked all the time and nobody can carry a conversation. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And I, then suddenly I, like, wait, I'm 30? Oh no. <laughs> what? That's not fair. Oh, I gotta make headshots or something. Uh, every now and then I just in my, I'll rummage through an old box and I'll find an old headshot and I'll just, they're never good. No, no, it's impossible because it's several years old and yeah. time ruins anything cool. I have so many headshots where I'm like, I think I was legitimately trying to look sexy. Jesus. <laughs> uh, we had uh, Jerry Seinfeld was on our show once and he talked about how on the show Seinfeld, they intentionally tried to dress very neutrally so that the show wouldn't look dated in reruns and he talked about what a fool's errand that is because if you watch the show now he's like we look exactly like the year that it was shot <laughs> he's like there's nothing you can do about it and he was saying to seth like you and i are wearing sharp suits right now we look very good in 10 years we're gonna look stupid there's no way around it that's that's yeah uh... it's just a, a true observation and that's why he's the king oh uh, yeah Seinfeld's a great comic and then uh he just doesn't under he has that old man problem where if a young crowd doesn't like his joke he thinks it's their fault yeah 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 it's, so, it's, it's, uh, it's phones the cell phones yeah. growing comedy no no he no. Just, it's just that the phrase French gay king is not as funny as you think it is. That's all. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Re rewrite it. In fact, honestly, French king would be the fix. Not even joking. That would fix it. Yeah. You get, he looks like a French king, and then you do the same over-the-top gestures. Look, get him on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Bruno, is Jerry there? <laughs> um, but... Yeah, that's the thing. It's like the, the solution is always cutting. Yeah. It's not changing or adding. It's always just cut something out of it. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. Everyone knows that French kings were uh, fruity. Yeah. That's the word, right? That's what we say now, fruity? Fruity, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the solution isn't to go, all right, so I say this line and this is where I yell at kids. <laughs> <laughs> that's never the solution. Uh, no, I'll I yell at people who have paid to be here. <laughs> I shouldn't bitch. I shouldn't cry. Jewish. Yep. I started a revolution, but I don't have time. Uh, this next line I want to chat about. I don't know why I'm still a nice guy. Now, that's a fine line, but only people who aren't as nice as they think they are say that. Yes. Universally, whatever they talk about. If you got a guy who's like, why can't I get a girl? I'm a nice guy. Well, because you're a secretly a misogynistic ass or it's not much of a secret. Right. Um, I don't know why I get into so much trouble. I'm, I'm a nice guy. Okay. You probably run your mouth at dinner. Uh-huh. You, you called out a guy bigger than you and he wasn't in the fucking mood. <laughs> you're not a nice... You... What you mean by nice guy is, um, can't yeah. what I am be nice enough? <laughs> that's what you mean. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it means. Yep. Yeah. Why do I have to be nicer? Yeah. Because uh, almost everybody else is. That's why. Nicer. And the other thing is, nice guys don't need a payoff for being nice, you hump. <laughs> that's not how that works right it's like when people misbehave and they say i don't know why i did that it's uh, out of character for me and it's like well no if you did it 
then it's your character. Yes. <laughs> Just because you don't do it constantly. Yeah. You, yeah, that's definitely within your character. You're not Jesse Pinkman in El Dorado or El Camino. You're a real person. You fucking did that. Yeah, so it's clearly in your character. Unless later on we find out somebody slipped them Molly. Then I'm like, okay, well, okay, maybe that oh, yeah. well, that That explains why he hugged everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, you know, it's a similar to like, oh, hey, I was drunk. I'm like, oh, okay. That didn't turn you mean. No. That you... just means you were barely holding it back before. And then you got <laughs> drunk and too tired to hold it back. Uh, my mother said something so funny to me once when drunk. Because uh, my mom was a nice, she loved me very much. And then uh, one time when she was drunk, and then this maybe won't seem as funny now to you guys, but to me, it's funny in retrospect. She said, I wish I didn't have another kid. And I was the last kid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And in retrospect, I'm like, if you scripted that, people would go, okay, I get what you're going for, but not that. Yeah, no one would say that right to their kid. You gotta, you know, you gotta sort of imply that. <laughs> yeah. No. Nope. Yeah, my mother sort of was good at implying that. She would say to me all the time, do everything you want to do in life before you have kids, because once you have kids, you can't do anything. <laughs> and I go, oh, so because of me, like, what is it you're not doing? Oh, if I kill myself, then will you go become a dancer? <laughs> oh, I have to kill my sister too. Right. So that, so I don't have kids. Because yeah. uh, she, she scared it out of me. I'm like, oh, you can't do anything? Oh, well then, no thank you. Also, she didn't seem to enjoy having kids. So I figured it was not a thing that people liked. So she did you a solid because you don't have kids. I don't have kids. She didn't say anything about cats. Thanks yeah. a lot. <laughs> Thanks for omitting that. I could have used that. She didn't tell me they live just as long as fucking kids. <laughs> oh, you're a very abusive parent if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> they live as long. Well, I guess they're with you as long as a kid would be. Yes, I get what you yeah. mean now. Yeah. Yes. My cat is 18. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And not has self-sufficient not, yet. Has not filled out an application. Nothing. <laughs> not even looking at her college pamphlets. They're piling up by the door. Uh, All right, I think. <laughs> I don't know why I'm still a nice guy. Yeah. But I'm getting close to the borderline. To the borderline. Now, I do think this is where we do a little musical change. Yeah, this is your little bridge. I thought I'd sacrifice so many things. I thought I'd throw them all away. I didn't think I needed anything. This is the line I don't understand. But you can't afford to squander what you're not prepared to pay. What does that mean? Yeah, you can't afford to squander what you're not prepared to pay. I. It feels like we're talking about consequences. So you you can squander, when you squander, say a fortune, you squandered a small, a small fortune. That is a thing people squander <laughs> um, or time. Like squander. Or, um, you're left then there, it isn't a consequence free choice to do that. You then have consequences to deal with because you uh, chose to- You have to pay in other words. You do have to pay, so that's what I think it means. Okay, I don't, I don't hate that. And like, I just you, couldn't, I couldn't get it to make sense in my head. Gotcha. Here's an example: Graham Elwood and I used to live together, and um, I lived with Graham and Paul. Fucking nightmare. Uh, oh yeah, that's terrible. And uh, one day he goes, "We should go to Vegas." Now, mind you, we couldn't afford rent. <laughs> right. Um, and our plan was to go to Vegas with the little bit of money we had and run it up, as they say, which is, oh. what, which is what smart businessmen often say. Right. 
first ones to think of it. Yeah. And so we drove to Vegas, which meant we had enough money to gamble with and we had enough money for gas and not much else. So we did it. And I've been to trips to Vegas where you went with that in mind. And it turned out I've had that happen because it right. can. And by turning out, I mean, I left with $300 and I came home with like $800. And it was, well, how great is that? Really great. That is not what happened this trip. <laughs> <laughs> it never happens when you really need it. Yep. And the funny part in my memory is if you could have filmed it, filmed the ride up there, two idiots laughing and joking and we're ready. Yeah, fucking Vegas, run it up and just. <laughs> yeah. The whole ride home. Oh. And that would be an example of, you know, Say, you know, sometimes you think you're ready to pay a given price, but man, we were not really ready to do that. No, we were only ready for one outcome, which is we won. <laughs> ah, the best. So, uh, yeah. That, yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. In fact, I even, to be honest, kind of even like the lyric, but you can't afford to squander what you're not prepared to pay. And that, I mean, that is the gambler's thing is, you know, a good gambler always says you just don't take more money than you're willing to lose. Right. And professional gamblers, like my buddy, who was a professional grinder for a while, who now knows better and has an office job or he won't get shot. <laughs> um, you even have to be, if you really want to be a gambler, you even have to be prepared to lose money. You weren't sure you could lose because that's your job. That's a weird job. That's yeah, that's stress you don't need. I don't like that many things out of my control. I feel like there's enough of those in the world. Yeah. Uh, I need a doctor for my pressure pills. Oh, I also just wanted to say uh, the way he sings squander is really cool. Yeah. And it yeah. makes it sing along with. It is a good, like I said, I think he just really gets the lyrics nice here. Yeah. I need a doctor for my pressure pills. I need a lawyer for my medical bills. Those don't rhyme. That's <laughs> Wait, they do rhyme. Bills, pills. Oh, they do. What, what's wrong with me? How am I saying the words? I don't know. I need a doctor for my pressure piles. A lawyer for <laughs> my medical bills. <laughs> I need a banker to finance my home, but I need security to back my loan. Eh, that's Ah, uh, yes. Lots of catch-22s. Um, I do like the expression pressure pills. Yeah. <laughs> is, is that ever a thing anyone called them? If, yeah, and if it's something just- Blood pressure called, pills? And no, I'm sure this is anxiety pills. Ah. I'm sure it's for anxiety. I think you're right. I think it's a unique wording because I think he means anxiety pills. That makes sense. I think he's being artistic there. And I think it's, I think it's not too cutesy. I think it's just cute enough. Yeah, no, I like it. It helps that he hasn't done a lot of that before in the song. Cause if he had done that a lot, you'd go, and then here's the pressure pills. <laughs> well, you're like, I'll, I'll take one on the way out of the song. Yeah. And, uh, and I need a lawyer for my medical bills. I need a banker to finance my home, but I need security to back my loan. And take us home, because I like what he says next. It isn't new what I'm going through, but everybody knows you've got to break sometime. Another night, I fought the good fight, but I'm getting close to the borderline. I like that a lot, because now he's acknowledging he's done better in the past. Not tonight. Not tonight. Tonight's a rough night. Yeah. Um, I do like, there's a lot more self-awareness than he sometimes has <laughs> in these yeah. songs. He's like, oh, I have these problems and these problems. It isn't new what I'm going through. Yeah. This is not unique to me. I'm aware of that. Yeah. Everyone, everybody knows you got a break sometime. Yeah. Another night I thought that, it's a lot of like self-therapizing. Yeah. I, um, as a write, when you write, I know that this has happened to you. You write, and there's a joke you write or a thing you write, 
that isn't quite there and you have to fuss over it and fuss over it and fuss over it. Yes. Every now and then you write something and it's great and it's a reasonably original thought and it comes out perfect. You don't have to change a single word and you were lucky that day. Yeah. And I bet you this is pretty close to just what he wrote. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. I think it just, because this feels like, well, because it doesn't feel, I don't think there's anything wrong with these lyrics. I just don't. I think they're real nice. Yeah, it's nice and clean. Yeah. Not, no uh, attempted word play. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the cliche of the good fight, but it's uh, sometimes, you know, we try to avoid cliches as much as we can, but I think in songwriting, sometimes they're nice shortcuts. Yeah. Nice and economical. The good fight. I don't have to explain to you. <laughs> Look. Yeah. Um, I mean, even sometimes when you write, um, a cliche is handy because who are you trying to communicate to people? <laughs> you know, just. <laughs> You and what do people do? They talk in cliches. Yeah, and you you get this, and now we can move on to the, the real point I was making. But you right. get this, you understand. We don't have to detour for me to explain something you already know about. I'll just yeah. give you the thing. And uh, and it ends with drum again, by the way. It ends uh, with a lot of drum. Uh, and you know me, I like a song most of the time. I prefer a song with an ending. Yeah. I like a song that says, hey, you're done listening. You've done your job. <laughs> go to sleep you now. You can go listen to something else, but you don't have to. You can just clock out now if you want right. to. Yeah, yeah. It, the, the radio fade out is always like, is the song ending or am I going deaf? Am I slowly <laughs> going deaf four minutes into this song? Yeah. Or, oh, no, no, no. Now the DJ is talking about the weather at the airport. Yeah. So <laughs> I guess we're done. And honestly, why did you, you wrote a song? Why did you stop? Why did you stop writing it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let's all agree that it's over. That would be funny to go to like a songwriter's house and go knock and go, okay, this is your song. You're finishing it now. I want to hear the rest of it. I'm not leaving until I hear the rest of this song. It j you don't need much. Yeah. Just uh, like, and that's all that happened. Cha, cha, cha. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> okay. Now I know. Thank you. Oh, Lord. That's a good ending for a lot of songs. <laughs> uh, did you ever get the pressure pills? It doesn't matter. Uh. Uh, oh, my not a lot of diagnosed with pressure. <laughs> my doctor says I have pressure. Well, you might <laughs> then need a, is it the kind, do we need a screw? No, not that kind. No, no. Luckily there's a pill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you heard about Billy. He forgot to take his pressure pills and he uh, burst. He burst, yeah. yeah he burst on the uh, F train. So, what do you what do you think? Oh, uh, oh boy! I say I got a black cat. Like he's waiting for biopsy results. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the cat and a phone. I will tell you for sure. I'll <laughs> be impressed if you get it. Okay. Uh, it's it's a direct reference to a lyric, but. It's not hmm. like, it's not a hit, I don't think. Cat on the phone. I'll, I'll give you a hint. I'll need a hint. You, you do not need to answer this phone. It seems like nobody's actually calling. Huh. Not to bum you out, but <laughs> I don't think you're actually getting any calls. Oh, so no, there's no signal. There's no dial tone. Oh, I bet there's a dial tone. Oh. I just don't think anyone's calling. Oh, no. Yeah, I I'm, I'm alone on a Saturday night. I'm a little black cat and I don't have a date. Yep. <laughs> yep, that's something that's going uh, on. Yeah. Just an unpopular cat. <laughs> well, I bet, the, I bet someone loves the cat. Mm-hmm. 
But I bet that person wishes they had someone other than a cat to love. <laughs> I love how every hint takes me further away. <laughs> ever <laughs> knowing what you're doing. Ah. Uh. Um, I guess I'll give you a real big hint. Uh, I bet the lady who lives here with this cat has a, I, th I would say, a, a very Italian name. <laughs> Rosalinda? That's it. Does Rosalinda live there? Rosalinda lives there, and I will tell no? you that, yeah, it's Rosalinda. Now that the children... Oh. It's Rosalinda. Uh huh. Now, now that the children oh, have yeah. all grown, now all you have is just a cat and a silent telephone. I don't even remember that lyric. All you have is a cat and a silent telephone. What? I don't even remember that lyric. And we were just talking about that song before uh, we came on the air. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Well, it's Rosalind. Yeah, I was doing a little research for our trivia question. Rosalinda's eyes. I have to listen to that song as soon as we're done. Was your question going to be what song doesn't have a cat and a phone? Because you might be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I have to recalibrate. <laughs> it's like, what is the, the name of Rosalinda's pet cat? <laughs> um, no, Rosalinda's eyes, written for uh, Billy Joel's actual mother, whose name is Rosalind, uh, which doesn't flow nearly as well when you sing it. Rosalind! Yeah. <laughs> it really just jams up at the end. Wait a um, minute. Wait a minute. Before you do this, I want to look at something. Uh -huh. It's a different song, my Are you going to look at the lyrics to see if there's two. Oh, this is crazy. There's two songs. They're both Billy Joel songs. I'm telling you the lyrics that are from Ros Rosalinda. You're about to do trivia about uh -huh. a different song. He has two songs named Rosalinda. That can't be right. Right? There's Rosalinda. He has a song called Roberta. He has Rosalinda and Rosalinda's Eyes. Not true. And I'm on the Billy Joel official site. <laughs> Rosalinda. Are from... you sure you're not on the bridge? Well, he also I has I think song. you're on the, uh, the Bruno Mars website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> There's no Billy Joel song called Rosalinda. It really is. It's on Piano Man. I have Rosalinda's eyes. No. I reject your claim. <laughs> and now I'm seeing it. What? Oh, Rosalinda, why do you cry? Oh, Rosalinda, could this be why? Now listen, I haven't heard this. I, I don't remember the song. I hope he goes I don't song at all. I hope in the song he goes, why you cry? I hope he sings it that way. <laughs> wow. I uh, no. It's on Piano Man? Yeah. Holy shit. All right. All right. We're talking about I was honestly wasn't gonna pick this for any good reason. We're talking about Rosa Linda next week. Okay, I'll tell you what, it's on the 2011 reissue. It's a bonus track. So it was not on Piano Man. Okay. It's on the 2011 reissue with two other songs I've never heard of, Long Long Time and Josephine. Well, Long Long Time, how great is it? I've got two Rosalindas and he's got two long time songs that's great <laughs> all right i don't uh, know do i really want to pick this no i want to don't pick it no because i don't know if i have the 2011 reissue <laughs> all right i'm going to pick something else but that's hilarious yeah all we're right. only 
15 or 16 episodes in. Yeah, we don't need to go that deep to we'll not go there yet. Oh, that's oh my god, there was no way you were gonna get it because you didn't know that's great. That's great because <laughs> Uh, well, I feel vindicated in some ways. Absolutely. And I feel like I did a did good work here. That's a nice looking kitty. It's a very great background. And thank you for uh, uh, free pictures that people put on the internet that specifically say you don't need a license for them. Yeah, God like bless. Those. Yeah, thank you for doing that, people <laughs> at whatever website that is. All right, give me your trivia question. <laughs> Um, the trivia question is uh, that Billy Joel has uh, a half brother. Do you know his name and his occupation? His oh. occupation was very interesting to me. He was born to his father and his father's new wife in Vienna, where his father moved after he divorced uh, Rosalind. He moved to Vienna, remarried, had a son. Okay. That's a hint. It's a boy. I'm going to say he named, the man? he named him William. That's a good regional guess. His name is Alexander Joel. Okay. He is a classical conductor. Wow. That um, is cool. Which is another, another regional behavior. Wow. Um, yeah, really cool. I thought it was very cool that he um, slipped over it. And I wonder if they've ever worked together, like when Billy had that classical album, I wonder if his half-brother ever conducted it. And it, it is very cool that it turns out they were both musically inclined. That's dope. Do your thing, internet. Is that what we say? <laughs> yes. Find out. Find, get me a concert poster from that event. Oh, that's great. All right, now I, I will then mow you twenty. <laughs> I'll tell you the song. I, I was gonna pick a different song on the album, but I thought we've talked around this song enough that I really want to talk about it. It's uh, not a fave of yours but I want to talk oh, about good. River of Dreams. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I mean, I think we For just, the younger kids. We just got to get it out of the way. Uh, <laughs> I get, so I get, uh, there's a thing about music for me that'll happen where every now and then I get into a very goofy mood musically where I want to listen to Leslie Gore or I want to listen to like, old 50s rock and but i really like silly rock and roll sometimes like some of the leslie gore sillier songs like sunshine lollipops and river of dreams is kind of that it's when i'm in a particularly um soft mood and not particularly uh say judgmental and yeah. i do, i like hearing the song then and then at other times huh? I will judge myself for that feeling. Yes, I'm very familiar with this whole vibe. <laughs> so that will be the song for next week. Love it. Great. All right. All right. Then, River of Dreams it is. I'll end on this. My wife got me this. It is a oh. chain. That dog, if you see that dog, can you tell it's a dog? Yeah. I you can, can barely, but yeah. It is uh, my little boy who passed away this year, and he's with me all the time now. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, she got some jewelry made for me, and uh, because my wife likes to do this thing where if she gets me a present, she wants to make sure I cry. So. Yeah, oh, that's good work, and yeah. real, real easy to do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, got, you got me lunch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you know? My favorite midday meal. <laughs> My second favorite. Um, <laughs> what? All right. Uh, good job, everybody. Thanks for listening, and uh, we'll keep doing this. Yeah.